I was drilling that Richard Alvarado, my compadre, he was my boss, and he told me, Charlie, I want you to go back there. I think it was like a 1900, and they were trying to start a new stove. And he said it, it was a lot more narrow than here. He said, you got to go over there and, and widen out so we can get in there. So I was drilling the, the foot wall. What they call a foot wall is the wall that comes down. The hanging wall is like this. And I'll tell you, I don't know how. I was looking over here where I was drilling, and by the corner of my eye, I see something like dark. And I did not wait for nothing. I just let go of the machine. I started running back when I heard bang, bang, the walls came down. And if I want to see that, I wouldn't be here today. It would have killed me. So that was one of the worst places that uh, I had to work. And they told me, him and this, they were putting up uh, lumber, timber. And he, he told me, compadre, said, you look out back there where you're going to be drilling. We heard voices. We go back there, there's nobody there. But we heard these voices. And this guy that he was working, he was an old guy. He was an Italian guy. And he never messed around with nobody or kid around with nobody. And his name is Tony DePetris. I said, Tony, I said, tell me the truth. Did you guys hear somebody back there? Charlie, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes. We heard somebody yelling for help. And we go back there, Richard, and now we go back there. There's nobody. So you be careful. I said, okay, thanks. So finally, they got everything widened it out, and they start putting their timber. It was ten by tens like this, and up here, down here. So we start working there, mining, and we finally start filling in to be able to be close to the top to drill. So this friend of mine, he was a real good friend of mine. His name was. Uh, we called each other a Marine. He was the next Marine. And I was the next sailor. And we were eating lunch from here to that helmet. And he asked me, Charlie, he said, where are you going to be for Thanksgiving dinner? And he talked real a funny voice, you know. I said, I, Marine, I said, I know where I'm going to eat. Do you know where you're going to eat? Oh, yeah, I know where I'm going to eat, Charlie. I said, okay, well, I hope so. So we finish our lunch, we go back there, and about 20 time we're ready to light about 50 holes. And we lit them by uh, uh, splitters. And once you start those other parts that you're filling, it gets so dark and smoky, you can't even see your hand in front of you. So he said, okay, it's time to light up. I said, okay. He said, I'm going over this way, and you go this other way. And then we work together. So we started working. We hadn't even lit up yet. It's a good thing we didn't. So then I heard a bang. I turned around and, well, where is he? He was standing right here by me. Where is he? So I started walking back there and I started yelling at him. And I looked down, there was these draws like this. And uh, I looked down there and there he was, laying on his back. And what happened, that boulder that came down killed him instantly. So I started yelling for help down below. Start, guys started running up there to see what was it. As soon as they saw him, they turned around and took off running. No, we can't see this. We can't see this. I said, we got to get this guy out. we got to help. You guys got to help me. No, I can't do it. So this friend of mine told me, I'll get him from the legs and you can get him from his arm and pull him to get him. We still have to get rock off of him. One of his arms looked like it had gone through a meat grinder. Oh, it looked awful. So I pulled him from the arm and it looked like a nerve, but its thickness is a, is a cigarette and it just stretched out. So, oh my God. So I told him, I can't. So he said, we'll get him, get him from underneath his shoulders. And that's how we picked him up. As soon as I saw him down there, I knew what had happened. 
He was bleeding through his mouth, nose, and ears. So I said, I know. And then his color changed. He was white guy, but like a, like a sheet. Bled to death already. So we got him out, and he had a cut from his neck up here, from the skull, all the way down to the bottom. And it looked like it just got a sharp knife and just cut him. And he was open like this. You could see all his insides. Oh, my God. I said, oh, my God. I said, I hope I never, never see this again. So anyway, we got him out. And by that time, the boss had already come down. And we'd been telling them, this place is too dangerous. Put timber in there instead of open. No, we can't. We can't. I said, you have to. Somebody's going to end up getting killed. And sure enough, then he saw him there and he got a hold of him shoulder. He started crying. The boss, he was an old guy. He started crying. He said, oh, my God, I wish we would have put timber. Yeah, but now it's too late. So we had him in a basket. We took him down and took him, hoisted him outside. So I told him, and when we were going up the cage, I told him, you know what? Don't ever ask me to go back down there. I won't go back. I was scared. Afraid to go down there. He said, I won't. 